or Muslims. Let me tell you something that you should need to know. There is a report that's been put out. This report has been developed in America. It is what most of the governments in the world today are using as a ruler and a parameter to judge Muslims, to evaluate Muslims, to diagnose Muslims. And let me read to you what they have said concerning us. They, the so-called non-Muslim experts, have politically and ideologically grouped us into the following categories. They said that the Muslims of the world are of basically four different kinds. They're talking about Ta'ifiyah now. They are fundamentalists. They are traditionalists. They are modernists. And they are secularists. Let me define those terminologies for you. Fundamentalist means those people who are saying, we want to go back to the Quran and the Sunnah. We want to establish the Quran and the Sunnah. We want to follow the three generations of Islam. No, we do not want bid'a. We don't want ghulu. We don't want excess. We want the Islam, the Quran, and the Sunnah, and all our actions, and that's it. They call us, those who say that, fundamentalists. Although in Islam, there's nothing called fundamentalism. Then there are the traditionalists. These are the people who also say they follow the Quran and the Sunnah, but they hold on to a certain classical tradition. They say we are Wahhabi. They say we are Hanafi. They say we are Shi'i. They say we are Hanbali. They say we are Shafi'i. They say we are Maliki. Although those four men Ahmed ibn Hanbal, Imam Shafi rahimullah, Abu Hanifa, Imam Malik. Although those are our fathers, those are our scholars, those are the mujtahideen of Islam and the greatest people who brought Dalil to us from those generations, no doubt. But following them blindly as a tradition is what the category here is. People who follow them blindly, and therefore they don't unite with anybody else except those who follow each one blindly. They are called traditionalists. Then there are the modernists. The modernists are those who want to make a new interpretation of the Quran. They want to make a new interpretation of the Sunnah. They want to make a new interpretation of Islam. In fact, they are the people who may want to join all the religions together to have what they call peaceful coexistence. They are the people who call themselves Wahdatul Adiyan. That is, they want to join with all the religions together, Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianism, Semitism, so on, so on, so on, so on, so on, make it one all religion. It even sounds funny, don't it? Yeah, think about it. Hinduism, Buddhism, Christianity, Judaism, Brahmism, Shiism, is Heism. <laughs> they want to bring all the religions all together with respect, and everybody want to go down the road together. We will overcome. See, that's what we want to do. This is called Wahdatul Adyan, making all it sound nice. One world religion. I, I don't know who would be the head of that, maybe the Pope. They got the most money. Or it might be the mayor of Jerusalem. Or it might be Jack Chirac. Or it might be Mr. Howard. Or it might be Mr. Bush. Or it might be whoever. We don't know who might become the leader of this new world religion. But the people who call for that among the Muslims, they are the misguided people and they have joined the enemies of Islam. No matter how intellectual they are, no matter how sincere they are, no matter how educated that they are, they have joined the camp of the enemies of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and they have said by doing so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has not given to us the haqq. And that this deen of the Quran and the Sunnah and the wala and bara, the loyalty and the disassociation the loyalty for the Muslims and the disassociation of the Kafirs that there's nothing like that in Islam. We just go along down the road with whoever's happy with us, we're happy with them too. Oh Muslims, they have come up also with a formula. 
Not only have they classified us, but they have also come up with a formula to deal with every category and how to create hostility and opposition between the different categories. They have determined that the greatest threat to Western civilization and the, con is, and the continued dominance of Western culture is, the, is, is to make sure that the Muslims never reestablish a global identity and that there is no opportunity ever, ever, ever for them to reestablish the Khilafah. Let me repeat that point to you. They have determined that the greatest threat to Western civilization and the continued dominance of Western culture is to make sure that no nation among the Muslims develop among themselves a global identity. And secondly, they never, ever, ever have the ability to reestablish the Khilafah. Now this is in their protocols. This is what you should understand. This is what they are preserving. This division is subtle and hidden, meaning that most Muslims wouldn't even know it. Therefore, it is more difficult to recognize than to treat. The non-Muslims who consider themselves as authorities and experts on Islam and Muslims have observed the following. Listen to this, please. The Muslims in the world are divided into the following basic socio-political groups. Asians, Arabs, Africans, those of the Far East, those of the Near East, those of European, American, and Australian backgrounds, although those are of the minority, those of Slavic and Russian backgrounds, although they are also a negligible population, and those of South America. This is what they said. Look how they divide us. Our objective is to polarize these ethnic groups. That means to keep these ethnic groups from uniting together and exploit their cultural differences. In this way, we can maximize our global agenda and we can minimize any global threat from them. SubhanAllah, look how clear they are. Look how bold they are. Look how blatant they are and look how accurate they are. On the issue of ideological and personal differences, this has existed since the first century. Since the first generation of Islam, Muslims have went through this whole thing of ta'ifiyah. They have went through this whole thing of nafsiyah. A'udhu billahi min shaytan rajim Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu in jaakum fasiqun binabayin fatabayyanu fatabayyanu an tusibu qawman bijahalah fatusbihu ala ma fa'altum nadineen wa'alamu فيكم رسول الله لو يطيعكم في كثير من الأمر لعنتم ولكن الله حبب إليكم الإيمان وزينه في قلوبكم وكره إليكم الكفر والفسوق والعصيان أولئك هم الراشدون Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he mentioned in the surah which is called Al-Hujarat. From the sixth surah, from the sixth ayah, he says, O you who believe, if a fasiq, a liar, an evil person, comes to you with any news, Verify it, lest you should harm people in ignorance, and afterwards you should become regretful for what you have done. And know that among you there is the Messenger of Allah, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. If he were to obey you in most of what you say of your opinions, desires, and the news you bring to him, in much of the matter, 
you would surely be in trouble. But Allah has endeared the faith to you and has beautified it in your hearts and has made disbelief, wickedness, and disobedience to Allah and His Messenger وسلم, hateful to you. Such are those who are rightly guided. <laughs>